Thanks for the introduction. Uh, this is joint work with my colleagues in China. And I will be talking about the uh, constructions, the universal one with hash functions from several, um, from specific to more general class of one way, uh, one -way functions. Uh, I will speak, skip this because it's too fundamental for, the, for this conference. So it's one-way functions that are easy to compute and hard to invert in the average sense. And actually, before I introduce universal one-way functions, I would like to mention that the universal one-way function only like guarantees a small, uh, a weaker version of collision resistance, which we call target collision resistance. You can see uh, here I highlight the, the difference between standard collision resistance and the target collision resistance. So you know, uh, in the previous case, in the standard sense that uh, the uh, uh, collision uh, hash function is collision resistant if it's hard to find any collision. But in this case, the, the adversary has no control over the point. So it's hard to find the uh, collide onto a random point. So, so this is a weak, uh, weak uh, notion, but uh, at the surface is for many applications. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to also mention that we are talking about a family of one-way functions because uh, it's not a single function. Uh, otherwise, we can do very trivial attacks. For example, in a non-uniform uh, attack, can simply hard code a pair of x and x prime that collide onto a single, func a single function. Okay, and it's strictly weaker because uh, collision resistant hash functions are by definition already universal one-way hash functions. And we can do universal one-way hash functions from one-way functions, but uh, we know that uh, there are separations that uh, we cannot uh, construct uh, based, uh, based collision resistant hash functions on one-way functions. Okay, so, and they are, these are very useful ob objects because Universal one-way hash functions are sufficient for many important applications, such as like basing digital signature on from minimum assumption, and many more and PKEs and statistical hiding scheme. Okay, so and you know, and a, a more interesting phenomena is that uh, universal one-way hash functions and PRGs uh, they are dual objects. I will, I will call this function. I will call this term "woofs" because it's very, very, very time-consuming to to pronounce them. This. Okay. Uh, so these are these two are dual objects. You know, if they, you know the this, uh, the uh, the uh, equivalence established by Nanoya and improved recently in the EuroCrypt 2010 paper. Okay. So the duality is that you know. You know, we know one-way function, and there is no necessarily a relation between input and output. But if we are talking about PRG, it's always expanding. So the output is greater than the input. And this uh, woofs, woof, it's uh, shrinking. Uh, otherwise, it's trivial. Okay. So you know, the, we know the result is the feasible, feasibility result was ex established by, by here, the 99 paper, and recently improved such that, in such a way that uh, any one-way function on input of length n implies a PRG of seed length roughly n cube. But you know, in, in, the, in the case of uni universal one-way hash functions, output length is very, very, very much longer, like n to the power of seven, okay? So, but we are not going to improve this in this paper. But we are doing a slightly different line. We are going to construct woofs from special class of one-way functions. And here, I tabulate the result and compare with the literature, okay? In the case that the underlying one-way function is a one-way permutation, everything is already done optimally. But if we generalize the one-way function a little bit, if it's a one-to-one -one, one-way function, then uh, uh, yeah, and uh, you know this term is not optimum, and in this case, in this paper, we improve it to optimum. And uh, also for non-regular one-way functions, we improve also by a log factor. And let me say that this log, uh, this super constant can be any super constant. For example, log log n, and we believe it's hard to improve, and it would be just an artifact of the definition. 
So, and uh, if we additionally assume that we know the hardness of this un underlying one-way function, we can actually get the optimum parameters and with uh, almost uh, uh, secret preserving reductions. Okay. And then we move on a little bit, generalize a little bit. If the underlying one-way function is uh, any regular one-way function, then uh, things are already done. In the recent Asia Crypt paper, by AGV, and we have you know, linear output lens, li almost linear key lens. This is due to the soup's domain, domain extender, and it's hard to improve by this log factor, I believe. And this also match a recent lower bound in the number of calls to a, to a one-way function if the underlying regularity is, regularity is not known. Okay, and uh, so our last uh, construction, we do not improve anything, but we generalize the assumptions. We, we weaken the assumptions, and we, we show that uh, we can base the, on a class of function we call regularly, regularly regular one-way function, which arguably uh, behave more close to arbitrary one-way function. Uh, we, will come back, we will come back to this later. So, and here is a few standard tools, like universal hash functions, I would skip the, the introduction, and you know, it's just, uh, for example, hash function can just be, uh, universal hash function can be just be implemented by like the multiplications of a finite field and then apply a truncating function. Okay, and we know that the well-known hashing properties, the leftover hash lemma, lemma says that, you know, when we have some source which has entropy slightly more than the output length of this hash function, then we will get, uh, get like a, steady, a very close, a statistical close uniform randomness. Okay, this is what I know. And another hashing lemma which is less known is uh, when we have, a, um, uh, we have some uh, random variable with some max entropy here. Max entropy is defined as the logarithm of the support size. Okay, so so you know when this max entropy is less than less than the output size, it's bounded by some uh, bounded away by some d, then we will get un, uh, unconditionally targeted collision resistance. This means that even unbounded adversaries, when you sample random h, random x, cannot find a collision because this this function is almost almost always injective except for a very negligible fraction. Okay. Here you can also observe the duality, you know, the definition of max, I mean entropy and max entropy, and you know, the, difference, the difference between the output lens and the entropy, they are, they are in different directions. And then uh, we, we, first of all, we introduced the, the, the construction by Nano Yang uh, based on one-way permutations. Suppose we have a one-way permutation and we have a universal hash function, it's a lens preserving. We also have a truncating function that, that outputs only the first n minus bits. Okay, then we just, the construction is very easy. We just uh, compose f with, followed by h, and then apply this truncating function. That's it. And you know, this h will, de will describe, the, describe the constructed one with a uh, oof. Okay, and uh, you know, the, 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 this is the statement, quantitative statement about the result. And you know that the, here we have uh, the shrinkage, the number of bits it shrinks, uh, it, it, it compress is reflected in the, in, in the security, security term, okay? So you, you can at most shrink log n bits in general. But you know that this, this reduction didn't generalize to one-to-one -one one-way function. So if suppose we have a one-way function, a one-to-one -one one-way function, and it is expanding. Then this, this, this output size may be arbitrary uh, polynomial long. So if you want to, if you discuss many bits, then you will incur uh, exponential loss, and we, which will essentially kill this term and make your reduction useless. Okay, that's the, that's the difficulty of this construction. Okay, so, so that's why they come up with another construction, very close construction. So the assumption is that we have a, we have a arbitrary one-to-one-way -one -one function and it, it is expanding. 
you know, and you have many hash functions. Each hash function can compress the input by just one single bit, okay? Then we just apply the expanding one-way function, and we composing all these uh, composing all these hash functions one by one until eventually we get the output size, size is smaller than the input size. Okay, then we get the hash function. You know, and this is a statement, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, let's see the parameters. We have linear output size, but the, but the, the, the key length of this woof is not uh, ideal because uh, we have so many hash functions. It seems that the use of many hash functions are very artificial, which just to, to facilitate the proof. Okay, so our question is, can we de-randomize this, ideally to a linear size? So that's, that comes up, uh, comes our uh, first construction. We'll be, the assumption is the same. We have a one-to-one one-way -one function, and we also have a, a universal length-preserving hash function, and also a truncated function that outputs only the first n minus bits. Then what we do is we just uh, com uh, composing all these three functions, right? We dis we discuss any as many bits as as we need, and we claim that this is this fun this already is a family of woof. Okay. So let's see the proof. We, the assumption equivalent to the one wayness of f. The T epsilon one-wayness of F is that we can uh, also assume that uh, for any PPT, the probability that this, this PPT invert, oh, sorry, the, for any PPT, uh, it, it should be this, this algorithm. So the, any PPT that inverts this Y is bounded by this, the product with these two terms. So where does this term come from? It's actually defined by this game that the, we, here, we, we are not sampling a random image, but we are sampling actually a random L bit string. You know that the output of this f of x is only sparsely distributed over this set. So the chance that, the, oh, sorry, the chance that the, the fraction of valid images in the, all the, in the set of all L bit strings is only this fraction, okay? So that's why we have to multiply by this factor. It's essentially two to the n over two to the l. Okay, so then we have this lemma. So any any algorithm that breaks this TCR implies almost the same efficient uh, invert that breaks the one witness. Okay, so then we reach a contradiction. Okay, so and uh, so T has the proof tech, proof sketch. We define the the inverter, we will work as follows. This is the Y star uh, randomly sampled, and this is the image we want, we want to invert. And we sample all these X and sample all these H, and we make sure that the X of is these two strings, the first N bits of their X or sum is zero, so that when we apply the truncating function to both of the strings, they collide to each other. Right? And the rest, they can be randomly sampled, okay? Then if we, if we return we return x, if f of x already equals to a y star, but it's unlikely, otherwise we are too lucky. Then we invoke the, the collision vendor, and we, will and we will return the x prime. Okay, and the trick here is we use this term to cancel the, this security loss, because here in this case, in this construction, we discussed n minus l minus s bits, so that will incur a very huge security loss. But the good thing is that the trick here is that we use this term to cancel this security loss. Okay, and yeah, but uh, it remains to show that uh, the invert, uh, invert this, uh, invert this uh, y star with this probability. This is, uh, this can show that as follows. So it, first we claim that the sampling as defined in the algorithm is equivalent to this sampling. We first sample this x, h, and v from uniformly at random, and then we determine y star. And I ref uh, this proof is given in the paper. And then you know that the, the probability is that the, the inverter inverts y star is equivalent to this term, you know, 
then you know that uh, if we consider these first two terms, it's exactly the collision resistance, the targeted collision resistance, because you know the first n minus s bits, they are, they are all zero. So if you apply the truncating function to these two strings, they were, they were, they, they, it's actually a collision, okay? And so this term is bounded by the assumption, by the TCR, the targeted collision resistance. And you know this second, if you, if you want to make these two equal by comparing with, comparing with this one with this, you know that the, the first, the first uh, string is exactly the same. If we want to make this second string to be the same, we have to make this V prime equal to V. And this V, you know, this V is uniformly sampled, so the probability would be this term. Okay, so this concludes the proof. And our next construction is we assume a regular one-way function with known hardness, and we construct the woofs. Okay, so we have a regular one-way function. We know the hardness, and we know the regularity. It's two to the R to one. Then uh, we also have two hash functions. In this case, we not only hash the input, we also hash the output. Uh, sorry, we not only hash the output, we, not, we, we also hash the input. Because in this case, this, let's, see the, let's see the construction. In this case, fx is no longer, a function f is no longer injective, so we, we could already find that like x and x primes had collided onto f, f of x, so that's why we need to also hash the, hash the input, okay? So we use the two hash functions, and the, the sum of their output will, will, will the, the sum of their output will be equal to n minus s to make this function shrinking, okay? And here, this parameter s prime is not decided yet, but we already have this uh, quantitative statement. And you know, that's why, actually, that's why, why we need knowledge about hardness, okay? We can, if we set this s prime to be, like, depending on that knowledge about the, uh, uh, the hardness, then we can make this term to be a negligible term. And it's almost optimal except for the square root, okay? So that's for the second, uh, and the, the above construction can be adapted to handle almost regular functions. And here's the proof. Actually, the proof is not that hard because uh, if we find a collision, then either this collision, we already, since this is a, a compos composition of F and H, the collision either it's already collided on F or if it's not collided on F, but eventually collided on H. Okay, so it's bounded by two terms. So, and then we move on to our sec next construction. We assume a general regular, known regular one-way function. In, now we know the regularity, but we don't know the hardness. Okay, let's see if our previous construction still work. It's not work anymore. Here's the difficulty. If we, so for example, we don't know the knowledge, we don't know epsilon, but we need to decide S prime. If we are conservative, then I just send, the, uh, uh, let this one to be log n. Then, but then this term would not be a negligible term. This, it's only one over some polynomial. It's not like only polynomial, only small, okay? So, so then S prime has to be super, a super log n. Super log n then, if we set S prime to be some super log n, then we might add it up that this two to the power of S, S prime will kill, eventually kill this term. Okay, so that's the difficulty. Uh, the, the, the solution is we just, as a standard trick, we run a few super constant, uh, uh, super constant copies, and, this, uh, and then this super constant will be reflected in the final construction, essentially, okay, sorry. So we have now the secreted term, uh, secreted term, we have two terms. One is n to the minus q, okay? So, and the second term is a negligible term. So we have to set q to be a super constant, and any q constant can do. Okay, that seems to be very artificial. Okay, then um, we achieve or almost optimum up to some super constant factor. Okay, then, yeah, and then we move on. What about any, one, uh, any regular one-way functions? 
what can we do? But the, the good thing is that uh, it's already done in, in, in the recent Asia Crate paper. They already have this construction. So here, here the construction X is no longer the input. The input is just all these Bs, B1, B2, all the way to Bn plus one, and the output is Y. And this hash function is keyed by two strings, X and S. Okay. And this is soups generator. This is essentially, essentially soups uh, uh, the randomization technique. So these odd hash functions, they, do not, they are not necessarily independent. They can generate it using a very short seed. Okay, so we have, so we have a family of woofs where the seed length, a key length is n log n, and the, it can pass the input by one single bit. Okay, so the parameters, what we have is output length, key length, and the linear number of calls. So a price, if we, don't, if we do not know the regularity, a price to pay is we have to run a almost linear number of calls to the underlying one-way function, regular one-way function. Then we are going to generalize this a little bit because it, it's we can certainly generalize this to almost regular one-way functions, but that's not good enough. So then we introduce this uh, this notion we call weekly regular one-way functions. We actually we introduced in this year's TCC paper. So if we group all the images into different sets, sets, okay, by their pre, uh, by, uh, group the images into different sites, but uh, according to their pre-image sites. So let's say y, y j, uh, this, one is, this one is dead. So uh, yj is actually uh, corresponding to all those images whose pre-image size is roughly two to the j, okay? Then we can group all images into different sets. And you know, in, in this using this language, regular function means that all the images actually consent, consent on one single set. Okay, for example, y max. Okay, this is, this is definition of regular, one fun regular function. And if almost regularity, the whole images kind of like uh, concentrate on almost uh, a few sets that are neighboring to each other and the index are bounded by some log n. Okay, so this is, uh, these two cases are, are, are the one-way functions, the regular one-way functions that uh, AGV12 uh, handle. And we are going to assume much less, similar, at least seemingly much less. We're going to assume that these one-way functions are weakly regular. That is, there exists some set such that the whole images has like a noticeable fraction over this set, and all the rest images, they, are, they have pre-image size smaller than that. So all, all, this, uh, in all the sets beyond that has like zero, zero weight. Okay, so this seems to be much, weaker, and of course we can also further generalize okay, to, to the almost, uh, to weakly almost regular case, but then we only prove this, uh, we only prove our construction under this assumption. Let's see, <coughs> the, the overall idea is that uh, when we have a weakly regular one-way function, first we just construct a family of almost regular one-way functions and we just plug this function into the previous construction because this previous construction already handle almost regular one-way function. So that, by doing that, we reduce the problem to construct almost regular one-way functions from weekly regular one-way function, okay? But here, this case, this case, in this case, these one-way functions, they are a randomized object. It's a family of one-way functions. And in general, like randomized one-way functions are not make, make not much sense, but in this case, it only serves as an intermediate object. Okay, so the, we can get key length, which is n log n, and output length, which is uh, linear in n, and they make polynomial many one-way function calls, okay? And we, how to construct such a almost regular one-way functions from weekly regular one-way functions? We are used the uh, randomized iterate by, by HHR. So we just iterate this function followed by hash function for the, uh, many times. And here we use a bounded space generator to generate all these hash functions with a very short seed, which is N, okay. So we're having dinner anyway, so yeah. 
yeah, and improve the one wayness and improve the almost regularity. So to conclude, we still solve, we still didn't solve the 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 the, 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 the problem of how to construct uh, woofs from any one way function with efficiency more than that. Okay, so actually, you know that the best, currently best known woof is is dual to the PRG like 10 years ago, but you know the PRGs has been recently improved. But so the question is really, can we efficiently construct woofs using uh, like a dual technique to, to, to the recent, to the, the, to recent uh, constructions? You, you, this is the other two recent stock papers. But I'm not very optimistic about that. Despite the despite the symmetry and the duality, there are also some complications. That's it. Bon appetit. Thank you very much.